on the Elite 2 League and we're at San Coy as you've seen from the intro. And you've seen the good as well, it's reverse grid race so it always mixes things up in the opening laps. Uh, false start from Chris back there by the looks of things in the Ferrari so he's going to be right down the back but everyone else seems to have got away well. Thundercat in the Subaru um, has launched past the Atenza that is now sitting in second. Shadow Hunter tucks himself up nicely behind the Atenza. Dixon's on the inside as well. T1's a 90 degree, oh P's got it wrong. Let's just go back and have a quick look at what happened to P. He was in second, he had Shadow on to touch up behind him. Oh and he just looks like an outbreak or an underbreak or whatever. Shadow on to wakes up for him so there's, there's no harm done there. Those things that will happen from time to time in T1. Now you've got a big, long drag down to turn, well, turn two. That was this is coming down to turn three. Uh, big braking zone, so the power cars can really get the pedal down to the metal at the minute. This is in just one of those in the Mustang. As we see Scooby go for a move down the inside there, but that doesn't seem to work out. Chris Max getting himself battled down to six now. On the outside as the GTR takes the inside line. Uh, Dejko BMW trying to fight off Audi Ferry. And Shell Shock in the Audi we knew would get a terrible start. And, uh, down to ninth for him. You see a car off in the background there. That's Chris Mack in the Ferrari. He's not having a great opening lap. So well and truly off roading at Goodwood last time out. But a stable mate at the top of the table is Fubuki. He is, of course, now challenging um, for the title with the Don Dotter not racing this week as well. That uh, mathematically makes it very hard for anyone other than Fubuki to win the league. Of course, we'll cover all that at the end of the video. Thundercat in the Subaru. Always does well in the Subaru. Third place with a little bit of a gap now to the two Hungarians. We've got P and Audi Ferry. Uh, the Audi TT should be the quickest car here, given its straight line speed and the amount of straights we've got. And Audi Ferry just slips on up the inside. Very compliant P. Behind him, we've got the other Audi of Shellshock. He will be putting some pressure now on the Mazda ahead of him. That's not quite. Oh, he was close enough because P had to get on the brakes really early there and Shellshot was able to get a move made down the inside touch of the barrier though and that's just kind of let uh, P back up the, uh, the switch back. Uh, but I fear that uh, the Mazda's days are numbered. We now come to a ridiculously long straight uh, and the Audi just, just, just kind of drives past basically. There's, there's no contest in this. The Audi's gone. Shell shock up to fifth. We're now we're going to be chasing down the other Audi TT. And meanwhile, Thundercat has got his way up to first place. Completely missed that. Looks like Dixon might go for a move down the inside here, though. Thundercat, in fairness, looks to kind of let that happen or get a bit late on the brakes himself. Fabuki's trying to get a move made on Thundercat for the time being. A Douglas Garden Solution Subaru is winning out well, although he is going off road in that those Subarus just keep wanting to go home. Like the golf ball in Happy Gilmore, just want to go home. And meanwhile, player two has entered the building. 
Audi Ferry has unceremoniously gone up the inside of Thundercat there. Proper sent it. Fabuki's going to do the same back. And they are shell shot now. Up to fourth. Thundercat got a really bad exit out of that corner. Obviously that... Um, incident there with Audi Ferry has affected his speed out of that corner. We will 72 man who had a fantastic race last time, that one to six for him. And he's got the opportunity to score some big points today. Dejku in the BMW, good race for Dejku so far. He's sticking with the main pack. A little bit further back we've got P. After that we've got Scooby who's just rattling into walls. Chris Mack and Shadow Hunter, who is not having a good day in the office today. Catch up then with our leader, Mr. Dixon, uh, leading the way at St. Croix at the minute. Uh, although I didn't think he was going off, then he wasn't. Fabuki is not going to let him have it lightly, though. Uh, Fabuki's got Audi Ferry for company. Audi Ferry's got Shell Shock bearing down on him. Thundercat's not out of the uh, not out of this fight yet, of course. The Subaru should have better tyre life than the Audi. The Audi is a, is about you know it's a quicker car. It's, there's, there's no argument about it. It's just a faster vehicle. I'd love to say at this point that Audi Ferry and Fabuki need to work together to catch Dixon, uh, but I don't see that happening. Probably see these two scrapping over the coming laps. Fabuki making use of all the track there as we look back. The field is starting to spread out a little bit now. So Adi Ferry looks to get quite a good drive out the corner as well, but Fabuki in the four wheel drive just gets a lateral grip. That's what you need at a corner like that, which is slightly off camber. The Subaru will handle that one better, but here's where the Audi comes into its own on the straight. It's going to drive past on the outside. Fabuki's going to hold it on the inside. Fabuki's kept second for the time being, but we are coming now to the longest straight in the world. And the Audi is up ahead. Probably a little bit of a smart move from Fabuki. That means he's going to get the slipstream of the Audi up the straight and you know, tuck himself under the rear wing of that car and uh, get sucked off all the way down the straight. Uh, the Audi though, even given the slipstream, is managing to pull away a little bit. It's just a lot of a faster car. Let's see if Fabuki pulls out the slipstream though. Yes he does. I told you these boys are going to fight. Fabuki just gets that move made. Shellshock has entered the game now. He's uh, really rocketed up to the back of Audi Ferry. Uh, so he's challenging. Uh, Shellshock's been bringing Thundercat with him for the party as well. Behind them is Rear Wheel 72 man, the winner of Goodwood. Uh, he's looking to get involved in this as well. And there is a little bit of a gap to Dejku in 7th, who himself has got a fair old gap to P. P's got a little bit of a gap to Scooby. And then behind them are Chris Mack and Shadow Hunter. And 11th, respectively. We've not got a full lobby in tonight, we are missing a few drivers. Uh, Jay Wills, notably, uh, the Don Dotter, notably, as well. Uh, all missing from uh, all missing from action this week, not really sure why. The man of a second, then, still hotting up for Buki v Audi Ferry. So the Audi though is just, just the equaliser of that straight line speed. Yeah, but Fabuki's playing it quite smart. He's not attacking him too hard. He's letting him go in the bits where he can utilise his slipstream, which is quite a clever way to attack the Audi. And let it, let it use its strengths for your benefit. has succumbed to the Godzilla and he's now in 6th place uh, Vero 72 man is, God, I was going to say it looks like he's got a really weird line going on there uh, 
but it looks like he made a mistake with Thundercats going to reclaim fifth place from him. I spoke to these cars four wheel drive, but the Subaru is probably just a little bit better in the corners than the GTR is. The GTR is probably just a little bit better in the straight line than the Subaru is. It's relatively even cars with slightly different attributes, these two. has decided he doesn't like the blue of his Mazda and is determined to scrape all the paint off it, I think. Shadow on to up to ninth now, so Scooby and Chris Mack have had a massive accident somewhere along the way. Dixon's been reeled in now by the guys ahead, so Dixon has up until now been having a little bit of a casual time of it. Not really any pressure from anyone in the opening ten minutes. All of a sudden finds um, a rampaging Audi and, um, and the championship leader coming up behind him. Uh, Shell shot, notably, not too far behind them either. Audi Ferry gets himself up into the leads. Uh, Dixon didn't really fight that one too hard. I must say he's painted his car like some sort of sex toy. So I don't quite understand, but he's to their own. train begins once more. So Fabuki opts for the slipstream of the Audi. The Audi not really passing the Mustang, which is interesting to see. I imagine the Audi would have sailed past it. The Audi gets on the brakes a little bit earlier. Kind of outbreaks himself a little bit. It's all closing up now. Stay with that camera and go quest, not change it. Fabuki then behind slips in front of the Audi. I foresee this as a battle. They go on for a little while as they all run a little bit wide. They all sort of follow each other off. Dixon just struggles to get his car back under control and in the melee just gives Fabuki a little bit of a tap. And absolutely no harm done there. Fabuki does progress to first place. Followed by Dixon and Audi Ferry. They're now squabbling over second. Shellshock is involved as well in fourth. Uh, fifth place is now starting to drop back. It's this top four battle. As we just hear a massive impact. Uh, this top four battle is really starting to hold up. Shellshock's going to have the ultimate slipstream. The slipstream of four cars in front of head. Uh, looks like Dixon's indicating Audi Ferry to go through on the left. He's got his left indicator on. Uh, he decides he doesn't like his sex toy coloured car anymore, wants to repaint it. Uh, he's let Audi Ferry through, I'm not sure if he meant to let Shellshot through as well. But uh, that is ultimately what happened. So Audi Ferry with the pace of the Audi. Uh, back up into the lead of the race. But as we enter the handling section of St. Croix, uh, the Subaru is going to come good again. And indeed, it's on the inside. Uh, side by side here, good racing from, from these guys, got to be said. Uh, they've kept it uh, They've kept it respectful. Dixon's starting to drop back just a little bit now. I wonder if he's feeling his tyres go. A little bit further back. Uh, we will 72 man's got uh, up to... I thought he was going to get himself up to trouble there with Dejku. The BMW is going to look to make a pass down the inside here. Dejku's pulled out from behind Godzilla. The ultimate driving machine goes through up to six now. So good move by Dejku out the inside. Rio 72 man can't answer that straight away in the next corner. But Dejku, oh, just leaves it a little bit wide. Oh my days. That has filled my heart with. Auto display. I was willing you on there, Dejku, as well. Uh, that's going to put Shadow Hunter up his backside. So Shadow Hunter has now got himself up to 8th after the T1 Palava. Uh, not much change at the back. Everyone's just kind of lapping around on their own, in fairness. There's, there isn't too much to cover around at the back, I'm afraid, but we will keep checking in. And uh, the action is all here. 
Ferris in the battle for first. Audi Ferris pulled away from Fubuki just a little bit during that lap. To be honest, I wasn't necessarily expecting to see. And we're now in the Audi's, Audi's power zone, so the long straight. on this, it was so long I was checking text messages halfway down it, that's how long this thing was. You just sit with your foot planted and just waiting for it to finish. So we will, 72's got past Thundercat somewhere along the line. Godzilla is arising. Dutchkoop still running there in seventh, so not too bad for him. Uh, there is a little gaggle of cars, Shadow onto Scooby, uh, quite close together. The field is starting to really spread out now as we come to our fifth lap. Some drivers will pit now because we are bang at the half uh, halfway mark. The top three don't. Dixon is going to take the opportunity to get some fresh rubber on that uh, on that Mustang. My pit last time here was about 10, 11 seconds there or thereabouts. Uh, we were all 72 man tries to do it. Put him into it. It's only been four, yes, Shadow has come in. Yeah, P's still in the process of taking all the paint off that car he possibly can. So is Chris Mack. <laughs> Tested out the, the crash structure of a Ferrari 458. Oh my days, that's cheap, man. Don't know why. Scooby's doing donuts, yeah. Dad's cute, though. Starting to put some... Uh, Put some grunt on the back of Thundercat. Thundercat's been in the pits, don't forget. So, uh, this is technically not for a net position unless Dodge Q is no stopping. The BMW driver putting moves on the Subaru. Uh, nicely on the brakes, it gets a good drive out the corner as well. Does Dodge Q just gets over to the race and the block of a return move? Good driving. Just don't, don't, yeah, it's good lads. Good lads. Perfect. I do like to see Dodge Q do it. more things at the top, so moving down just a little bit, uh, there's, there's little gaps emerging between the drivers now, Audi Ferris put 42-0 on the board, which is a ridiculous pace, Fabuki's fastest at the minute is, uh, well it's quite a lot slower than that, uh, but the Audi does have that big equaliser, and it's straight line speed, but um, he'll be feeling the tyres right about now I should imagine. Sheet. Just check something as well, just for people to go around and round and round and round and round. Fastest lamps. Oh no, it wasn't the quickest. Um, what I was checking for then was to see if that 42-0 was the quickest that was recorded on the night. It wasn't. It was a 41-2 in another league. Uh, but still, a ridiculous lap. <coughs> uh, so, kudos to Audi for popping that one up on the board. And uh, things have remarkably simmered down. There's a massive gap between all the cars now. There's not really much in the way of racing going on right at this minute in time. There's a lot of people remodelling the cars. One of them there, Shadow Hunter, who um, who's given his who's given his car yet more war wounds. And to be fair, he's treating his car like UPS treating the parcels, isn't he? Really, just yeeting it into a fence. It's basically what UPS do. So he's just he's just taking on the, his sponsor's ethos. 
basically. That's what he's doing. That's what you tell him, mate. And I love how you are rocking other people's logos, but not mine. Yeah, I'm the one who does your commentary. I know where your loyalties lie, boy. I will remember that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you join me right at the end. Uh, lap 8. Uh, a lot of drivers will only have a 30 second or so window until the race slams shut. Some will make it through, some won't. Uh, nothing much has really happened. The field spread has been relatively stable. Uh, Audi Ferry has pulled off a no stop in the Audi. As you can see, I've loaded up his tyre wear for you at the bottom so you can see just how shredded those fronts were. So he's going to come across to win this one. I think he's just going to... Yeah, he's going to come across to grab it. So Audi Ferry takes the win. Uh, Fabuki now stopped as well in the Subaru. Remain consistent. Did drop a few seconds at the end of the race, but just to be expected. Uh, so he grabs second place. Some good points for Fabuki still this weekend. Uh, Mr. Shellshock, again, another no-stopper. Great job for Shellshock. Uh, Dixon did stop. Uh, but the Mustang does chew its tyres up, so he's got four for Rewell 72 man. A uh, good result for Rewell 72 man. Again, another good point story weekend for him. Uh, he's going to slam slam the handbrake on and give us all a show at the finish line. Uh, Mr. Thundercat uh, probably had a little bit of mixed emotions finishing this race, but a sixth place is a good result um, in a car that isn't particularly greatly suited to the track. Gives us, a, gives us a flash, which we love. Does he unbreak? Yes, he does. My man. Proper 360 as well. Like, you put effort into that one. Good lad. Sixth place for Spandekat. Dadjku. Dadjku's going to do it as well. Lovely. Oh, is he? I thought he'd peak too soon then. <laughs> nice time for Dadjku. Scooby. Can Scooby be? Yes, he can. He slams it on as well. Shadow on her. Just, just let me down, mate. I'm sorry. He's not fully nerfed into the handbrake culture just yet. As you can see, he's done some decorating on his Atenza. He's probably struggled this weekend as P. Uh, probably a bit lack on the practice side of things. I've right, got a temp for P. And then Chris Mack rounds off our field in 11th place. Time for the outro then. And as is becoming custom, we'll have a look at the championship standings after round six. Um, as you can see, with the Don Dotter not racing again this weekend, that's uh, hurled Fabuki to the top of the table on 176 points. Now, if the Don Dotter doesn't race again next week, he's still probably going to get promoted because mathematically, no one else can accrue enough points to, to knock him out. Um, Jay Wills also has been absent, which throws a lot of things open. So, it looks like we've got the potential for Thundercat, uh, a real 72 man to go up, certainly if they keep... Um, performing as they do um, they're going to be in with a shout at getting those those spots because Jay Wills and the Don Dotter won't be scoring points if they don't race um, Shellshock hasn't yet done enough to guarantee it if he has an absolute terrible weekend next weekend he's, he's not safe uh, but he's put in enough of a performance over recent times to, to get himself there or thereabouts uh, relegation spots uh, unfortunately for Dejku he missed that much of the first part of the season it's going to be hard for him to recover it um, although it has to be said uh, the last sort of couple of rounds it's been really good to see him putting in some good performances um, Pete relatively new to the league so his position will be assessed based on his pace he didn't join all the way through it uh, Tosh and Kwanda haven't raced the full season um, Chris Max should avoid the drop uh, providing he uh, providing he races next weekend basically he'll avoid the drop uh, and the, the mid uh, field places are sort of all up for grabs with a couple of points between drivers so Elite 2 is certainly not finished yet and um, I'm sure we'll have uh, have an exciting finale to the race next week uh, I'll try and work out the exact permutations as we go uh, so we can have sort of like a round up this time next week and see where everyone lies uh, but for that uh, we'll, we'll obviously join you in a future video um, in terms of next week's racing, uh, the next week is the final week of the GTTCC. That's it. That's the racing over with. We go to Blue Moon Infield A. Probably one of, I'd say one of my favourite tracks. It's not one of my favourite tracks, but I like it. And then coupled with one of my most hated tracks, which is the Yamagiwa and Miyabi 
circuits that they're awful awful i just don't like them um, but they do produce good racing so it's worthwhile having them in uh, so yamagawa and miyabi will be the season finale it's going to be a reverse grid as well as a reverse race so it's, it's promising to be a banger to be honest so tune in for that one uh, until then i will um, wish you all the best and uh, stay safe take care of yourselves and i'll see you in uh, another video bye bye <laughs>